Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year. Welcome back to the Running Back Podcast, baby, because we're back for 2021, episode number 40. That's right, you heard it right, 4-0, coming at you hot this fortnight. The boys are back, they're back together. Yeah, most of us wearing our Runner Back shirts, some of them aren't, but we'll give them a leaf guard this week. We might even take them to run it back court, but I would not do that to the boys this early in the year, and I would not corrupt this podcast once again with my run it back uh, court antics. So in knowing that, I'm going to hand over to the man that knows how to stabilize the podcast, Captain DL. How are we? Snags, I'm good, and welcome back, my boy. Good little break over Christmas, but I am pumped to be back with the lads. Do say this every episode, but absolutely huge show, and I really, really mean it this time. We have three cards as we head back to Fight Island, and we're going to look at all three today. Well, selected fights from those cards anyway, and also a little surprise. Well, not a surprise, because we did talk about it in the last episode. We're going to drop our awards on this episode as well, so we have to uh, push Hot Take to the side. And Hot Take will turn into our little awards ceremony uh, yeah, this time. So to that oh, should be good. I think the listeners want to know when you said uh, this week you're telling the truth. Does that mean like every other week you're not telling the truth? No, basically? no, no, no. I always like to say it's a huge show. So I really mean it. I think this week is a really huge show. Huge, huge. Uh, huge. 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 Very on theme at the moment. We also crown our 2020 champion. And uh, speaking of champion, unofficially, Stoney, what's good? DL, good to be here. Good to be back. I hope you and the boys had a, a great Christmas and New Year. I hope all the listeners had a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Let's hope 2021 has a lot of positive in store for everyone. But yeah, the question on everyone's lips and the elephant in the room, so to speak, did Sugar Snags get an extra stripe for Christmas? We can't... Well, mate, everyone's going to laugh at you again after the Nazi roll. You can't get an extra stripe after you're on four stripes, mate. You go directly to your blue belt after that. So zero for Stoney to start the year, boys. Congratulations. I'm going to leave you there. I'm going to fly home to the only man that will support me in anything that's actually real. Statman, how are we, my friend? You know, I, I spent most of the Christmas break devastated about the events of the 2020 run it back leaderboard uh but honestly that fuck up from stony <laughs> minute, minute two into the podcast into 2021 has put a huge 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 smile on my the five stripe white belt boys coming in at hot <laughs> <laughs> i'm the most ranked white belt in the world at the moment <laughs> by stony's course well you it's good to have you here you feel like if you walk down onto the mats and some dude comes up he's got like eight <laughs> stripes <laughs> Just, just sandbagging the belt. competition. <laughs> He's like, yeah, they, they offered me the blue belt. I decided just to get another stripe. <laughs> another stripe. Put another stripe on me. I, just, I didn't want to compete in the blue belt. Well, that, that'd be more prestigious. I can jack a Souza out here with 20 <laughs> stripes on his white belt. <laughs> It's been a good year. I'm retiring, boys. Uh, well, boys, well, we know what will be in the awards episode for 2022. That's for sure. <laughs> Highlight of 2021, the five stripe white belt. <laughs> that's my next series on the podcast. Golly, Stoney's yeah, getting right. ripped to shreds. <laughs> Go on. Holding the ball. Oh, good start. Oh, yeah. Good start, boys. Tell you what, I've won a couple of matches in my time as a five stripe white belt with my Imanazi <laughs> role. <laughs> Oh, okay, that's enough. Uh, the boys much. are in fine form for 2021, and uh, I'm a bit of, I'm a bit scared to hand over the uh, next segment to Snags, but uh, it's time, boys. Let's jump into the podcast with a little story time with Snags. What a way to start 2021, boys! I mean, this book is going you know, from stride to stride. Every single podcast, uh, it's gone through some trials and tribulations. To be honest, we've gone to court for this book. We've uh, had the backing from another podcast for this book. We've had uh, messages come long and far by pigeons, uh, by you know, relatives of Germans, everything basically. So uh, we're going to quickly roll in. I, I think I should give an update considering how long the podcast has been going on for. So we're up to letter L. We're almost uh, a significant way through. Quickly running for the fans. A for Anaconda, B for Berambolo, C for Chase, Chael Sonnen, D for Danaher, that's right, John. E for Eddie Bravo, F for Fast, that's right, no fuss, Keith Peterson. That's right, Zach, you heard it right again, buddy. G for Gogo Plata. Uh, H for the Hammer Chelsea Hackett. Uh, I's for It's Time. No, it wasn't. Imanari Roll. <laughs> I forget what I was for. Imanari Roll was, yeah. 
Uh, J was for Jiu Jitsu and K was for Karate. Uh, so we're heading into L Boys. So I, I hear the boys have been doing their homework. Is that the Snags homework? Is that true? Honestly, it kept me up most of last night. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty excited. Okay, well, boys, let's roll in. Who wants to kick us off for the new year for the letter L? We might go to the five stripe himself, Stoney. <laughs> letter L. Uh, no alphabet book would be complete without Las Vegas, the home of the UFC, the home of MMA. It'd be like putting a Wikipedia page up about the Coliseum and not mentioning that it's in Rome. So sorry to steal everyone's thunder, but Las Vegas. Las Vegas. You know what? If I was Wikipedia, I would choose that. But I'm not. I'm a book, mate, and it's ABC book. So, no, that's incorrect for the first one to hear for you. Stat in. You got the same one, don't you? No, no. I've got, I've got it completely different. I'm not, I'm not a hack like Stoney. Um, <laughs> so, um, <laughs> MMA and the UFC would not be the same without this pioneer, Lorenzo Fatita. Ooh, Ooh. I like that one. That is good. Pioneer almost had me, but I'm going to have to give you a firm decline. Sorry, my friend. Producer Deal, like, just bring one back for the boys. I know you boys have been doing your homework. Let's roll. Well, I'm pretty confident about this one because I think Snags might be thinking a fighter. I'm, I'm, on, I'm on your wavelength of typical Deal answers this week. Well, this one might catch you off guard. <laughs> okay. Oh, Jesus. Okay, let's roll. Brock Lesnar. Oh, the beast. The beast. Uh, incorrect, unfortunately. I took a took a leaf out of Deal's book for this one, to be honest, and I thought, why not give the boys an early win? And you've all decided to not take that option. Leg kicks. Ah, uh, it was on the list. Such an important part of the game, boys. How can you have a well-rounded game without leg kicks? Jesus Christ. Disappoint me already in 2021, boys. We've still got three to go, okay, so... Claw it back. The letter M. Surely someone gets this one. Stoney. We've spoken about pioneers. How about someone who's transcended the sport more than anybody else, Sugar Snags? Give me a bit of the notorious Connor McGregor. He said to M. Yeah. M- L- M- N- O- P. M for yep. <laughs> like Mary. M for McGregor. I, st- I rest <laughs> oh, my there case. You go. Stand corrected. <laughs> Do you know what? You're still incorrect. <laughs> Oh, Jesus, can't use that one for the next one. said it as well. He's uh, spelt man. it out for him. Mounted crucifix. Oh. Oh, that's got me a little bit of rail He said that to be honest, <laughs> but I'm going to say incorrect. I wish it was correct. I wish it was on me. <laughs> Stoney, coming back to you, if you wanted M for McGregor, you'd have to say McGregor. That's right, the notorious. Not the other way around. You said N first. I'm just clarifying for listeners. Deal. We did say Fuss Sorry, for no on, fuss. Deal. <laughs> Just to clarify for the listeners who are confused by this in, introduced criteria. Oh, that's too bad. Deal. Classic deal with this one. I'm going to take Matt. Matt. <laughs> like Matt Sarah or? Matt Hamill. Uh, like let's, let's hit the mats. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. I don't know I how anyone might have get it. this one. I don't know how you don't get it. MMA. <laughs> the agencies of MMA can't include the word MMA. <laughs> Why not? It's the <laughs> final part of the book, Greg. <laughs> it's what the book's uh, about. <laughs> oh, oh, shit. Man. Okay, we're going to the next one. So that was <laughs> it. It was MMA. Yes. Can you give this book a buzz? <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, next one we've got uh, the letter N, Stoney. That's right, N. <laughs> Or Nele. Absolutely love this one because in a in a sanctioned grappling event, this is not allowed, but in a street fight, which is where I'm more likely to run into sugar snags, <laughs> give me a neck crank. Ooh. Oh, neck crank. I actually <laughs> thought about that on my list, but it's incorrect. <laughs> oh, so funny. Sorry, mate, but good try. That was the closest you've got all year. I've uh, got one. Craig, what is you the amateur <laughs> hour? I started it off. I'm, I'm, I've year. got a point. I'm the only person. Yeah, JLP. Yeah, mate, it corrects after the year's finish. We're back in 2021 now, mate. Get with the times. Um, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna stick with my N originally notorious. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> it, was, it was on there. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna shuffle. It's up there. He's a, he's an icon, but he's not in the book. Sorry, boys. Sorry, let down. Uh, okay, Dale. 
I'm going to take North South Choke. Oh, good choice, but it's firmly incorrect. Now, this brings me such joy to announce this one after the letter L. <laughs> um, Stoney, what was your pick for L again? Las, Las Vegas. Vegas. Uh, that's right, boys. Ends Nevada. <laughs> Where all the big fights happen. So I'm really sorry, mate. You've got your wires crossed there, but they just got a little bit mixed around. Oh How could God. you go in an MMA book, as Sonia said, without <laughs> the pinnacle city of the sport? So we've made sure we've included in there. And it's for Nevada. Stacks. Stacks. Oh, I can't even say it because I'm laughing oh that much. It's the state. <laughs> the state. Jesus Christ. Oh, what's where they have them, mate? Yeah, it's the state. No, only in Las city. Vegas. They don't go to Reno and do shows. <laughs> Craig, it's in it's the, the state, whole, mate. Whole it counts. State. It counts. When they're bringing it to Tasmania, as we're still campaigning for, by the way, we won't be saying Hobart, that's for sure. We'll be saying Tasmania. Okay, last but not least, boys, the letter O. I'm sure it sounds like everyone's confident with this and I know what you're going to go and it's incorrect. <laughs> you're looking at me. Okay, Stoney. Oma Plata. No, that's exactly where I knew you were going to go. <laughs> so I didn't put it on there. Statman. Oma Plata. <laughs> no, DL. Oma Plata. <laughs> no. I knew when you're all talking about the letter O, that's what you're going to go. Look, I'm going to give, uh, I'm going to do two things here. We're going to put a pioneer of uh, MMA in Australia and give him a shout out as well. That's right. O'Neill, Cam O'Neill, boys. Uh, head honcho of Eternal MMA. Got to chuck him in the books because he just loves the potty. So hopefully he's listening this week. He gets a shout out. <laughs> um, so this is his favourite segment too, I'm pretty sure. So hopefully he loves that one. So boys, uh, look, thanks for coming. Thanks for playing. But yeah, boys, better luck next fortnight. And please <laughs> bring your A game. Seriously. Something to get a bit concerned about your who doesn't get MMA in an MMA book. Jesus Christ. Great right, deal. Well, next week, boys, next fortnight, we roll to uh, P, Q, R, and S. Start doing your homework. Um, I will firmly buy anyone a six-pack if they get the letter S. And I will uh, give you a quick tip. We've talked about that that answer several times on the podcast. There you go. Got a bit of a hint. Maybe the listeners can guess it during the fortnight as we lead up. Who knows? Welcome, boys. Another year of good fights. I remember when we did this back in 2019, we did a full show. Did we? We did a full show of awards. Not this year, boys. We're going to jam-pack this into about three minutes. (laughs) (laughs) Illustrious awards on the podcast, boys. (laughs) So I feel like we're a little bit slow off the awards, Mark. I've, I've heard a lot of potties, uh, a lot of posts on socials of everyone putting their awards up. I feel like we're about two and a half weeks too late. The award for the latest award show, Running Back Podcast, yes. is the victors. <laughs> so, boys, that's okay. We'll still give our opinion. Uh, we've got four categories, finish of the year, fight of the year, breakout fight of the year, and the final one, which is fighter of the year. We'll also crown our 2020 champion. Boys, let's kick it off with finish of the year. We have four nominees. Kevin Holland, UFC 256. Joaquin Buckley, Fight Island 5. Kobe Garbrandt, UFC 250. Arena Lipsky, UFC 255. We've got two honorable mentions, which has got Sean O'Malley, also on UFC 250. And Romanov UFC Vegas 13 for that insane forearm choke. Brutal. Our winner. Joaquin Buckley. Joaquin Numenza Buckley. They are so even on total strikes at the moment. Dan, that is real life ninja stuff. I think honestly, uh, that clip tells the full story. You can hear a dude start screaming about a full 10 seconds after the knockout took place because that's 
that's how long it took to register what the hell you just seen. You've seen like Enzanguris and you've seen spinning heel kicks from court kicks before. You've never seen anything quite like that. And everyone I've ever spoken to about MMA was messaging about that fight. That I think it was the most uh, tweeted or retweeted UFC clip of all time. Just absolutely insane and a well-deserved finish of the year. I don't think there's any competition there. The second category for us is fight of the year. And we've got some doozies in the nominations. The nominees are Davison Figueredo versus Brandon Moreno at UFC 256, Dustin Poirier and Dan Hooker at UFC on ESPN 12, and Zhang Weili versus Joanna Yedrechek at UFC 248, with an honorable mention going to Josh Emmett versus Shane Burgos at UFC on ESPN 11. And the winner is... Zhang Weili versus Joanna Jedrechek. Zhang Weili loaded up on that right hand just out of range. Clean land with the right by Zhang Wei Li. I mean, Joanna's forehead is swelling by the second. Oh, how about the swelling on Zhang Wei Li? Oh my God. Knee from oh, Joanna. Look at her forehead now. Oh! oh. Big shot by the champion. Joanna still hanging in that pocket. Oh! Huge oh, elbow from the objection. Boys, what a fight. And I think no better way to crown uh, fight of the year than uh, picking that one. Uh, Joanna's head looked like, um, I don't know if you boys have watched that movie, like Return to Mars or something back in the day, those little aliens with the big heads. Holy dooly, it looks scary. But uh, I don't attacks. think we were. Mars Attacks, that's right. Boys, watch it back. Joanna started it before a time. Um, <laughs> yeah, I don't think we were prepared for that fight. I thought it was going to go that, that well and be that much of a slugfest, but I'm glad we got to watch it. And uh, I look forward to watching it at 2030 with the boys as we sip on some uh, delicious whiskey together in our holiday houses. All right, boys, we've got Breakout Fighter of the Year. We have our nominees, Hazmat Chavayev, Joaquin Buckley, and Kevin Holland. The winner is... <laughs> Definitely not Joaquin. That's right, it's Kevin Holland, boys. <laughs> we've got the winner for the year. <laughs> but with a man like Buckley, yeah. the way he punches... Oh! Oh! Holland sits him down. What in front of a knockout for the Trailblazer? So whenever you guys want me back in there, I'm in there. I'm in there like swimwear, baby. Oh, stop! 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 Oh, and there's the tap! Wow! Don't move! Don't move! Kevin Holland! I can, do, I can do catch weight at 175, 180, or Mike Perry wants to do 185, November 21st, let's go. And then they told me they want me to fight somebody December 12th, I can do that too. And then if you want me to fight somebody before Christmas one more time, let's do that too. I'm trying to break records, let's go. Yes, Kevin Holland, it was not going to be anyone else really when he beat Buckley, who was obviously a contender for that segment. Uh, in the context of the year that it was, five and zip, I know that's been done before, but the quality of opponents and... Not getting an honourable mention for finish of the year with his finish of Jacare Souza, which I thought was phenomenal. Uh, just a, a really well-rounded, excellent year from Kevin Holland, which is a great segue, DL, into the final category of these awards, looking at the fighter of the year. And the nominees are Kevin Holland, five and zip, Davison Figueredo, three wins, zero losses, and one draw including a two-week turnaround, which is just unprecedented. Charles Oliveira, Valentina Shevchenko, and Israel Adesanya. And the winner is, boys... Davison Figueredo. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Mark Goddard has called a stop to this contest at 1 minute, 57 seconds of the very first round. Declared the winner by submission due to a guillotine choke... And still, the undisputed UFC flyweight champion of the world, Davison Deus de Gueja. Figueredo! And the final category. Our rib winner. Boys, what a dramatic end to our 2020 rib leaderboard. Not only did the stat man 
nearly steal it from Stoney. He lost on a countback. So we had a tiebreaker going into the weekend. Stoney picked that tiebreaker up. The boys finished on 79 apiece with the tiebreaker, pushed Stoney to number 80 and the winner of the 2020 runner back leaderboard. Stoney, congratulations, mate. Well done. Thanks, boys. What a year that that was. What a finish that that was. Statman, I've got to give it to you, mate. You pushed me all the way. But as they say, to be the champ, you've got to beat the champ and you could only draw with the champ. So, And still, uh, heading into 2021, expecting big things. A little bit nervous. I remember when Statman was, you know, 16 behind the rest of the boys early on and I called him. I said, watch this boy. He's on the way up. You know, starting all on an even playing field, you know, I'm a little bit nervous. I, he's on the rise, but I think I've got what it takes to, to defend this crown at DL. Oh, I think it was a really fitting way to end. It's that man. Yeah, so uh, obviously the, the fighter of the year and the rib 2020 champion both ending the year with a draw. Um, <laughs> obviously, um, oh, burn. It's, it, it, it is what it is. Uh, we, we did choose that tiebreaker and uh, sad to say it did not go my way. I do look forward to... If we if we look at recent trends and, and recent form, uh, Stony absolutely blew what should have been a an unassailable lead pretty pretty far in advance. Um, and he's right, starting even, starting afresh, starting anew with a ten point card uh, or cards, I should say. It'll be very interesting to see how the leaderboard looks in a fortnight's time. Yeah, boys, fresh leaderboard, 2021, starting on zero. So, Sugar Snags, you're in front. Mate, looking for, I'm honestly <laughs> looking forward to it. And I know each and every one of you are nervous that last year you're up against a four-stripe one. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. This year, five stripes, baby. <laughs> He's going to be so good at picking with that extra stripe. <laughs> well, boys, let's see if we can crown a 2021 champion. And this year, a little bit different, our leaderboard is split into two. So it's a six monthly belt moving forward. So we'll crown a champion in the middle of the year. Can Stoney hold the belt? We'll soon see. And boys, I think this is a perfect time to head into one of three cards we're looking into tonight. Statman, let's kick us off. Perfect. So uh, we start with UFC Fight Island 7, or perhaps more significantly known as UFC on ABC1. It is the first show that the UFC has put on a network television channel since their Fox days, and they are aligned with ABC for this one. Um, Could not have picked a better main event to showcase the the talent that comes with MMA. Um, To highlight on the undercard initially, we've got um, some oceanic talent. We've got Justin Taffer fighting Carlos Felipe in a heavyweight bout. And unfortunately, just due to the stacked nature of the next three cards, we're only going to be able to focus on the one fight, and that is, of course, the featherweight main event, Max Holloway versus Calvin Qatar. Calvin Qatar was 14-2 and two on a six-fight winning streak and hitting his physical prime of 25 in 2013, when abruptly he took a three-year hiatus from the sport. Despite racking up one of the strongest resumes in the Northeast, Qatar turned his eyes to promoting, purchasing the Combat Zone promotion and running numerous shows there, seeing it as a lucrative alternative to fighting. Eventually, he would find his drive again and string together another two victories before getting the call to the big show in 2017. Now, who, should we let Stoney do the picks this round as like a holdover from his uh, his victory days? It seems, seems only fair, yeah. It seems okay. fitting, yes. <laughs> Should we stay in the same order? Yeah, stay, same order, for, at least for the first card, until we can see how it shakes out. Uh, don't stress, Snake. You'll still be going fourth next card. <laughs> uh, let's, nah, mate, I'll probably be going fifth with this extra strike, that's for sure. Let's hope that UFC on ABC1 goes better than the ABC of MMA on Run It Back <laughs> 1. All right. Look, this one, Max Holloway coming in one and three in his last four. I'm not ready to write him off just yet. Calvin Qatar obviously is a phenomenal fighter, but I've got Max just edging this one out. I think it's a close back and forth exchange, and I'm going Max Holloway by decision as the first pick as the defending champ for 2021 Statman. Uh, disappointing beginning to the runner back 2021 season. Max Holloway by decision is also my pick. 
I want it to be blessed so bad. The man has got to get back in the win column, though not this fight. Uh, um, I'm taking Kelvin and I'm taking a decision. I think these boys are going to stand and let fly. But what a great main return to the start of the year. This is absolutely fantastic. We are spoilt boys and this is the first of three. Look out, Snag's going to take uh, Holloway as well. I think he's going to bounce back and get a W to start the year off for us. And uh, I am going to go by round three, TK. Nice. Moving over to UFC Fight Island 8. Once more, unfortunately, due to the stacked nature of the cards, we're only focusing on the main event. Welterweight bout between Neil Magny and Michael Chiesa. Michael Chiesa is a rather lanky fella. He has only ever faced one fighter who has a longer reach than him, losing to Kevin Lee by submission in 2017. Chiesa has a 75.5-inch reach, and it normally serves him well. He'll be giving up a significant amount of reach to Magni, who possesses the longest reach in the welterweight division history at 80 inches. Boys, I'm on Neil Magny for this one. I've not tipped against him in the history of my time on the Runner Back podcast, and it's not going to start tonight. I know I say this every time, but Joe Rogan once said, of all the fighters in the UFC, Neil Magny is probably the best he has seen outside of the cage, and he just hasn't been able to string it together inside the cage. Now, this is going back three or four years. I think over the last 12 to 18 months, we're starting to see a little bit more consistency come from Neil Magny, and I think that carries on into 2021, boys. So I'm going with a decision once again, Neil Magny to defeat Michael Chiesa. Uh, we spoke about it earlier. Um, Kevin Holland was not the first person to do a 5-0 and run. Um, Neil Magny was also uh, one of those fighters who did it. I still remember Gesan Umalotov, the fight there where I was watching it. And Neil Magny, was, he looked almost, and this is going to sound hyperbolic, he looked almost Muhammad Ali-esque in that fight. He was using his jab. He was shuffling. His footwork was amazing. And this was off like a rather tepid couple of fights in the UFC and I did definitely think to myself this fighter could have this he ran a five fight run in 2014 and he's always kind of sat around that mid-range since then uh he did a perfect 2020 with a three and zero run I think that this is perhaps the year that we see a Neil Magny championship fight I am unfortunately once more Neil Magny by decision Wrestled with this for a little bit. I really wanted to pick Neil Magny, but I'm a little bit of a Chiesa fan. Gets it done here at Welterweight. Since he dropped down a lightweight, and that, since that loss from Pettis, uh, Chiesa's looked pretty good. Um, so I think I might take him sub round two, which is the little bit that I've got. It's a little bit of a DL stat here. Magny lost by sub to RDA, who Chiesa beat in his only win of 2020. So little omen there. So I'm taking Chiesa sub round two. Look out. DL stat of the fortnight, boys. I did like it. It was very good. Thank you very much. I'm going to take Neil Magny, though. Uh, and I'm going to take him by decision. Not a thing Snags usually does, but I think this one's going to go the distance. That's it. Beautiful. Short and sweet, baby. You know how I roll. I like it. In there like swimwear. Good. Well, boys, we've got a new segment up tonight. And if you guys are ready, it's time for Stoney's. <laughs> That's right, boys. Stoney's Tool of the Week, specifically Stoney's Twitter Tool of the Week. Now, listeners will know that we don't take ourselves too seriously. We're quite active on social media and we love engaging with, with the whole community of MMA Twitter. Quite often, there's a lot of good takes, but every now and then, slash daily, there's some takes <laughs> that I think we just need to call out and keep them accountable, boys. So moving forward, how this is going to work Every episode, I'm going to have a look on the Twitter sphere and I'm going to highlight either a controversial or just a blatantly flawed opinion that someone shared. And we're going to call it out and we're going to dissect it and we're going to crown them as the run it back tool of the week. So boys, without any further ado, we are courtesy of an account that is very, very divisive on MMA Twitter. There's people who will defend him and there's people who will love to dig the boots in and so we're going to start with Phil, the MMA dude. The old, one of your mates? Phil. Phil. So yesterday, Phil uh, was feeling quite confident and he went to the, the Twitter sphere <laughs> and he shared an opinion on Rowdy, Ronda Rousey. And I'm going to read it, read it word for word, boys, and then we're going to dissect it a little bit. Phil, the MMA dude, says, Almost everything about Ronda Rousey's legacy is exaggerated. Besides Misha Tate and a few others, 
Her wins came against nobodies when WMMA was at its infancy. Rousey wouldn't be a top 10 135 in today's UFC. Even her draw power was exaggerated. 1.1 million was her total, her best all-time record for a UFC card. So first of all, Phil, if that is your real name, you're dissing a lady who transcended an entire sport for her gender. It's as simple as this. No Rousey and no women's division in the UFC. Dana has said it. The Fatito brothers also verified that. In terms of legacy DL, it doesn't get any bigger than that. Phil also said, besides Misha Tate and a few others, her wins came against absolute nobodies. The reality is every fight she took was a top five contender at the time. And conveniently, you mentioned Misha Tate, but you didn't mention Kat Zingano or Alexis Davis. Ronda Rousey tore through Kat Zingano in 14 seconds and Alexis Davis, I was there live DL, UFC 175 at Mandalay Bay in 16 seconds. Not only do they share a loss to Ronda Rousey, they both had to beat Amanda Nunes to get their fights with Ronda Rousey. So if we're looking and saying that these are absolute nobodies that Ronda Rousey beat her career off, that is just an absolute absurd take, Phil. And finally, the draw factor. You throw around 1.1 mil like it's absolutely nothing. The reality is if you take out the names Conor McGregor and Brock Lesnar, 1.1 mil, Ronda Rousey holds two of the top three selling cards in the history of the company. So, Phil, that post that you shared yesterday, that is what has earned you the run it back. And there it is, boys. And the new segment coming in with a little bit of fire. We love that here. Jesus Christ. Bloody <laughs> Phil's better jake his pants, boys. <laughs> so MMA Twitter, you are on notice because there'll be no holes barred. And if there's any listeners out there, if you see a take that's just a little bit dubious, even if it's one of the boys, send it through. We're happy to dis- dissect your own work and DL. Oh, I think I just got my goal for 2021, <laughs> boys. I need to be on this segment. <laughs> and maybe one day you can be on Stoney's Twitter tool of the week. I love it, boys. I love it. And uh, I think that's a perfect way to roll back into UFC 257. Stab me in. Let's go. Heading into UFC 257, the first pay-per-view event of the year, we have a straw belt between Marina Rodriguez and Amanda Rebus. Amanda Rebus's father and head coach Marcelo Rebus has a tattoo of Amanda's UFC debut victory on his arm. Her coach, since she was young, Rebus mentioned at one point that she gave up Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu to pursue dancing and it nearly killed her father. Uh, so Rodriguez coming in off a loss to Carla Esparza. She is two wins, two losses and – sorry, two wins, two draws and one loss in her last five. Amanda Rebus, she's just on an absolute streak. Granted, her last win was against Paige Van Zandt and people, you know, rightly question how much do we read into that. Also got some good wins over, you know – Caliber of fighters that I really do rate and respect. So Mackenzie Dern is one that, that springs to mind. I think Rebus has got a little bit too much uh, class for Rodriguez in this one. I don't see a finish. So I'm going a hat trick of decisions. I'm going Amanda Rebus by decision. Statman. Are we, we're not picking finishes for this one. Otherwise, we, we would have definitely our, um, our first disagreements there. Um, I do think that Amanda Rebus takes this one. I think her Brazilian Jiu Jitsu is so slick in this one. I'd be going submission if if it counted. Rodriguez is probably a an over earned sixth in the strawweight division, and Amanda Rebus is a undervalued fourteenth in the division. I think that I think that Rebus has the wins under her belt to cause a lot of trouble at uh, for Rodriguez in this one. Yeah, this is going back to Rebus's uh, favored. Uh, weight class too. Just don't forget her last win against Paige was a flyweight, and this is a strawweight bout who she feels a lot more comfortable at. So it's going to be interesting. So it's easy for me. It's Rebus all the way. I've been open about this on the podcast and outside of the podcast. She's a future champion of of a division, whichever division she wants to. I think she's got a really, really bright future. So I'm taking Amanda Rebus. Boys, we're going to put four ducks in a row and Snag's going to go Rebus as well. I didn't think I'd do this to start 2021, but uh, yeah, I think uh, she's just going to – I don't see her not getting the win, to be honest. I hope it's a sub. We'd love to see one, and uh, I think it's going that way as well. So Rebus for Snags. Moving on to the flyweight division, we've got Jessica I versus Joanne Calderwood. Great 
Jessica I has a little bit of a dubious history with missing weight. Uh, she's missed weight in a third of her flyweight bouts in the UFC and 25% of her total flyweight fights in her entire career. Um, we'll see how she goes with this one. A third missed weight in a row would likely lead the UFC to force her to return to the Bantamweight division. Yeah, look, really interesting one, this one. This is a, a real 50-50. I know coming into all of these uh, podcasts, we, we have a look at the card. This was one I struggled with the most. I, I couldn't really decide. I, I probably the whole old head versus heart DL. Uh, the head's telling me, Jessica, I, my heart is firmly on the bad mofo, Jojo. One of my all-time favorites, the sweetest voice. I love hearing her victory speeches when she does get a win and gets her hand raised. Let's hope that's the case again. I'm on the bad mofo, Jojo, to get it done. Jojo was by far my favorite part of the Ultimate Fighter season that she was on, mostly because it was a season full of very, very headstrong uh, women getting in each other's faces, and then it would just cut to sweet Scottish Jojo in the corner, um, politely asking the girls to stop fighting. Um, Very, very interesting to find out that she's got such a storied career in combat sports, kickboxing, boxing, a lot of combat sports experience. Both of these women are very, very touch and go. Very hard to kind of nail down which version of them will show up. I have both been impressed and completely not impressed by performances from both of them. Uh, And I completely agree with Stoney. This was a coin flip for me. Due to the coin flip nature of this event, I'm going Jessica I. Wow. I think Jessica I is still recovering from the head kick from Valentina back in June 2019. So I'm taking the politely spoken... Bad mofo Jojo for me. Sugar. Snag's going with uh, DL. Good move. And Stoney, unfortunately. I'm going Jojo as well. Um, I don't know. It's something just about Jessica. I, you know, I think the fight's going to be close. Don't get me wrong. But a um, couple of missed weights and stuff just gets me nervous. So uh, Jojo for Snags. Perfect. Uh, heading into the lightweight division, we've got Dan Hooker versus Michael Chandler in the co-main event. This is Michael Chandler's first fight in the UFC. He's coming from Bellator where he holds a number of company records. Most fights, most title fights, most finishes, and most title reigns in company history. And this is his first fight outside of Bellator since May 2010 when the lightweight moved to 3-0 at Strikeforce Heavy Artillery. Again, very interesting fight. Michael Chandler is someone who I really do want to see do well. There's been a lot of... I guess sledging over the months that he doesn't really deserve, well, he certainly didn't deserve to walk in as the late replacement for the Khabib and a Dustin Poirier fight. You know, not without credit, like that—that that is a valid point of view. But I do think he he brings, uh, you know, he he brings something to the company, and, and I want to see him do well. I didn't want his first fight to be against Dan Hooker, who's someone who over the journey it took me a little bit to come around. DL and myself were just talking about this before we come on air. Uh, I can remember uh, Hooker was starting to get a bit of noise and, and DL was firmly on, on board and I wasn't convinced. And then he lost to Edison Barbosa and, and to me that vindicated everything. I, I thought he had holes in his game. Since then, he has really gone from strength to strength. And it was back on that faithful day when the four of us all got together and went to UFC 243. I firmly thought Al Iaquina coming off taking Khabib to a decision would account for Dan Hooker. But to the contrary, Dan Hooker got it done. A unanimous decision, won a lot of brownie points in my book, and I've not looked back. Uh, Even the Dustin Poirier fight, which Hooker lost, I thought he was phenomenal and can hold his head really high, which is his most recent fight. I think he takes that momentum, uh, not the loss, but the the good performance into this one. I see that reach being a factor, and I'm going to say this will be a bit of a slugfest, and I think Michael Chandler gets caught in round two, Dan Hooker, TKO. I'm going to, for the most part, agree with you there. Um, This was an interesting fight to look at. Dan Hooker has been a a coach and a a head coach at City Kickboxing for most of his adult life. He was actually became a coach for MMA when he was 18 years old, and has been uh, the head coach of his own fight camp for the last couple of years now as well. So he's he's young, but he's got a lot of combat sports experience. Michael Chandler in the lightweight division is getting up there in age, and this might be a late signing for the UFC. It's not like the UFC to sign a fighter that is approaching the end of their physical prime. 
I was tossing and turning on this fight. Uh, to me, I think that Dan Hooker slows down a little bit in the later rounds. Uh, I don't know if it's a cardio uh, issue or the, the damage begins to accumulate because he is a balls-to-the-wall fighter. Uh, Michael Chandler calls himself the most violent man in MMA, and I do see that the first opening salvo is being absolutely brutal. I do think Dan Hooker takes this by TKO in round two as well, Stoney. Um, the other option was a decision for me, um, but I don't know if Hooker will have the cardio to eke out a decision. So I do think Dan Hooker takes this one, so it's got to be TKO round two. Glad the boys are all over our man, the hangman Hooker. The more I look at this fight, the more I see ways that Hooker can dismantle Chandler. That reach advantage is definitely there. If you want to really make something of Hooker, you look at his losses and people walk away thinking, wow, what an absolute fighter. Loves a scrap, that boy. And just for the just a special treat for the podcast, I've done a little bit of <laughs> numerology on this one. So going back on Chandler's last fights, four wins and a loss. Snacks. Then he went three wins and a loss. Now he's coming off the back of two wins. You know what that means? I, mean, I think it means a loss, Oh, baby. yeah, baby. Our boy Hooker all the way. But I think it's going to be a war just like every other one of Hooker's fight, so it's a decision for me. Oh, thank you, Rain Man. Um, I think I'm going to run. <laughs> that was actually pretty good. Uh, I'm going to stay with the boys, Dan Hooker. Uh, I know everyone's talking about someone coming from Bellator, a little bit maybe getting towards past their prime or the edge of their prime. Reeks a little bit of some Ben Askren in my books here, um, touted wrestler coming over and then having no luck. And uh, I hope, well, not hope, but, you know, considering he's up against Dan Hooker, that's how I hope this fight's going to go. And I'm going to go uh, TKO round three, just to be different from Satman and Stoney. Pretty please. With sugar on top. Sugar snags on top. That's right, baby. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's head into our main event. <laughs> What a way to start off our pay-per-views in 2021. We've got none other than Conor McGregor gracing us with his presence. Dustin Poirier versus Conor McGregor in the lightweight division. There is a time in MMA before Conor and there is a time in MMA after Conor. I look at after Conor beginning with his first pay-per-view headliner against Chad Mendes at UFC 189. If you look at the success that he has brought into MMA, the 23 pay-per-views that did not feature Conor McGregor immediately following his first ever headline slot at UFC 189 had a grand total of 9,344,000 pay-per-view buys. McGregor's seven headlining events have brought in a total of 9,875,000. If you include his bout with Mayweather, In the fold, you have to go 38 straight events from the after Connor era to match up to the 14 million achieved in McGregor's pay-per-view career. Absolutely astounding, the commercial success that he brings in. Yeah, and it's it's great for all fans to see him back. Love him or hate him, everybody cares about a Conor McGregor fight. And Statman, you mentioned 189. I was privileged enough. That was the very first Conor McGregor and, you know, the only Conor McGregor fight I've ever been to live. But the atmosphere there was something else. It's a night I will certainly never forget. I've never, since then, I've never tipped against Conor. And I can't see myself maybe a Khabib too, but certainly not Dustin Poirier. I think Conor gets this done. He looks and, you know, I am... I'm sick of seeing the articles about Conor McGregor is in the best shape of his career. It feels like for the last four times we've seen him, we keep seeing that. But he does look phenomenal heading to this one, DL. Uh, and, you know, he looked phenomenal heading into the last one. Uh, but I just, geez, he looks good. And I, uh, I look at his skill set. I look at what he brings to the table. Everyone talks about the, the vast improvement that Dustin Poirier has made since their first fight. And that is totally valid. What no one talks about is the improvement that Conor McGregor has made. It's almost like that's just taken for granted, but you can't dismiss that. Uh, and I think if you, you balance up, even though he's been inactive for long periods, when we do see him, he's just a different beast. And I, I think he, you know, has improved on par with Dustin Poirier. And I think he still comes out on top, just like the first one. I'm picking a round two TKO for the notorious Conor McGregor. There's nothing quite like the week leading into a Conor McGregor fight. Even, even when I'm 
I'm frustrated with him or I'm, I'm like, no, he's left the sport for too long or he's held up divisions for too long or he's had X, Y, Z happen outside of MMA. I don't want to hear his name again. It gets five days out from his fights and I start to get like goosebumps and I start to get like that frizzen feeling where the, the hairs start to, to stand on end. Um, and that doesn't go away until the theme music ends stops once he's in the cage and then Bruce Buffers is announcing it. So um, every time that Conor McGregor has a fight lined up, I'm like, ah, oh, it's, it's, it's Conor, it's cool, I'm excited for it, but MMA isn't just Conor. And then the week of a Conor McGregor fight, I'm I'm hooked in and I'm watching every, every single embedded, I'm watching every single vlog leading up to it and interview heading into it. Dustin Poirier is a phenomenal fighter. Very, very excited to see what 2021 Dustin Poirier brings against Conor McGregor, who has really had only one performance in the last four years. Um, I don't think, and I haven't seen anything from Dustin Poirier that would lead me to believe that he would do much better against the Conor McGregor that he faced the first time around. Uh, and I have to imagine that Conor McGregor has improved. He's had multiple ti- uh, multiple year-long layoffs where he's just focused on his striking and that's where he gets it done um i see this fight ending maybe a little bit longer than their first bout but i do see it being a round one ko from conor mcgregor Uh, i find it strange that people talk about conor being on the way down and poirier being on the way up the boys are very similar in age started their career around the same time so it's a really even battle when you're looking at experience the thing that I really like about this is like there is a lot of hype around Conor McGregor and we understand that. It comes with that, but he's built that brand. He deserves to be on that platform. And Dustin Poirier, great man, great man for the sport, does a lot of good things outside of the cage as well. Um, Conor's had his moments, but Conor does a lot of great things out of the cage too that don't get a lot of limelight. So I love this fight. Uh, these are two competitive beasts that are just keen to go at it. They want to put on a good show, both of them, and... For me, I see it as a Connor, and I see it maybe as a round three TKO. Snags. Look out. Look out. Well, boys, it would be unfitting for me to not pick the one and only notorious Connor McGregor. So that's why I'm backing. I don't think anyone – well, there wouldn't be many people in the world not backing him into the fight considering his previous performances – um, and as like Stoney said, he is looking sharp, not only physically but mentally as well. So um, I'm just glad he's back. A bit of hype, a bit of theatrics as he uh, – and uh, I think he's going to get the W. I'm going to go round two TKO. Um, and I'm just looking forward to the fight, boys. Bring on bring on some kind of magic. Boys, well, that rounds out our first cards of 2021. Be good to see how that all pans out and how our leaderboard looks in our next episode. But, boys, we've got one more segment to go. It's been a big potty. Let's do a little bit of runner back on us. All right, boys. So we haven't had a punters club for a little while. So starting nice and fresh. We still had a little bit of money in the bank from last year, sitting on that 130. Uh, this week's $10 investor is a Snags. Get it, boys. All good, all set up and ready to roll. I am. All right, cool. Well, I might kick off the first leg as per usual. Pretty straightforward. I love the form of this team. I'm going to go NFL once again. I'm going to take the Bills to beat the Ravens at $1.70. Oh, look out. When's that? Sunday. That is next Sunday. Copy that. Being added to the multi. Beautiful. Stony. Uh, going across the pond to the EPL snags. We're looking at Saturday, 7 a.m. Chelsea to defeat Fulham. Only paying $1.44, but I just don't see any way that Fulham wins this one. So I just think it's a, a nice, easy one as we ease into 2021. Copy that. Being added to the bet slip. I am bringing it back to our roots, boys. We are a MMA podcast. I'm jumping into... Uh, UFC Fight Island 8 uh, on the preliminary card. I'm going the brother of our fighter of the year, Davis and Figueredo. His brother, Francisco Figueredo, is making his UFC debut against Jerome Rivera. And I am taking Francisco Figueredo at $1.72. Add it to the bet. 
added to the bet. It is in there. Ready, right boys? How, Snags. How are we looking? Oh, how are we looking? We are there. looking very pessimistic <laughs> for, for our <laughs> usual multi. Four dollars fifty-eight. Four dollars fifty-eight. Yeah. Oh shit! What's what? What does that mean? That Scares Snags me. Going to drop now? Yeah. Well, do you want me to if drop you're... a safety one, or do you want to get some value in this bet? It's like forty dollars at the moment. Oh, let's get some. Let's get a win. Let's get a win. We just want to win. Just pump yeah. it to five. Let's get 50. Easy yeah. pineapple. Yeah. Is Roger Federer playing like the opening bracket of a tournament somewhere? No, Igor's playing. No, I'm joking. Um, I was thinking of backing in the Browns versus Kansas City. <sighs> Mate, they're all fucking fire. They're yeah. not beating the Can- they're not beating Kansas City. Oh, yeah. Well, gentlemen, what do we go? That just puts that out of left field for us. Snags is going to go. Something from a safe bet, considering the boys want a victory. Going to get a victory. Uh, that is a quote from Remember the Titans, if you didn't know, boys. So I'm going to go to the world of NFL as well, because that's where I do my best work. Um, and I think I'm going to take, yep, I'm going to do it. I'm going to take Green Bay Packers, boys. I think it's a solid bet over the, the Rams. They're only paying $1. twenty-seven, So uh, our Ooh. multi is very slim. Uh, our multi is right. at $5.10, which meant it's a $59 win. And uh, I think for the boys knowing the market, if we get the win, we chuck it straight into the Bitcoin, boys. What do we think? <laughs> <laughs> a bit of crypto, you reckon? Mate, I reckon. How mate, much of a Bitcoin could we purchase with 59 bucks? Not much, but it's going to rise. So I think as we continue <laughs> to put it in, or we could put it into an altcoin, mate. It depends how you want to float your boat. A bit of Bitcoin cash. Is Dogecoin is still a thing? Oh, Dogecoin's only paying like 40 cents at the moment. Oof. Four cents, I think. Sorry, got me wrong. We might have to start a new crypto podcast. But, boys, that's a wrap on episode 40. If you like what we're doing, like always, share, comment, or subscribe to the podcast. If you'd like to support the podcast even further, you can jump onto our store and purchase one of our supporter tees. That's us for episode 40, boys. I am a producer DL. I am the five-stripe white belt in the world, Sugar Snags. I am the stat man. And my name is Tony. And we'll run it back with you all on the next Runner Back podcast. Crypto, baby. Honestly. It's a doozy one, but the recordings only like an hour six, and there was a fair bit of fuckery there when I was pissing myself off. Yeah. Probably we we, we sped it up. We sped it up nicely. I think we went through the peaks quicker than we normally do. Yeah. Yeah, we did. A lot, a lot more ingredients than I was hoping for for a 10 point card. Um, but, but normally I think I'm probably going to show my next one.